here we are, folks. Joe and Mike, buildassetsonline.com. What's happening? What's with the Earl? Mike had me pull up all this this Earl. Because it's the theme of the show today, Joe. Secret, underground, untapped, high-ticket products. Dropshipping. Uh-huh. Niche selection. I'm just throwing out words. I'm just throwing out words because it gets the people going. That's what they want to see. They so want the- to know the products that nobody else is doing. And if you find these products and you sell them, you will make one gazillion dollars. Uh, so we're going to be drop shipping oil wells. Is that is no, that no? But this here? is just a metaphor. It's just a metaphor, Joe. Think about it back in the olden days, where you know you got some land. All of a sudden, just liquid gold explodes out of the earth. Out of the earth, and you're rich. Don't That's you what know these it. things do. They they tap into the earth, they they pull up the wealth, and then it's they got it. And but that's are, what we're gonna do today. But aren't there a finite number of resources? We're gonna get this is gonna get shadow banned because we're talking about fossil fuels for sure. Uh huh. So but you, I, you could you could pull up a friggin' solar panel if you want. But I'm saying, just like there's a, a, a fine, you know, people say peak oil, there's a finite number of oil that you can get out of the earth. Aren't there a finite number of niches that all the money's been made, it's over, just give up now, go back to, uh, go back to AliExpress? <laughs> Maybe there is. I don't think we've come even close to, to tapping all the... Uh the unearthed products that there are. Okay. Cause you All know right. what, Joe? I don't have faith in a lot of people. Some Maybe. one man's trash is another man's treasure. You think about all the different people we've come across, not even students necessarily, but people that we knew that were drop shipping that had good stores going. They maybe picked good products. Maybe they had some success, but then they fell off for some reason because they couldn't handle it. Right. So you can't be worried about what someone else is doing and thinking, oh, somebody else already got the niches. Then it's, there's no more left. Right. You can't look at these people. You can't trust these people. You can't assume that they're doing anything of value. You have to believe. You have to manifest. I know that you're the one that's going to take it to the promised land. And if hey, you believe, you will achieve. Hey, Mike, don't you know a lot about oil drilling? I am a chemical engineer by trade, you know, so I know a little bit. So about hydrocarbons. Well, so in the spirit of, of Earl, why don't we start? Cause I already have an idea of some secret niches that we could go after. And this is just off the, uh, off the old dome right now. But, um, so in the spirit of Earl, what if, <laughs> Olive oil press. Oh, boom. Holy shit. <laughs> the spirit of Earl. Hmm. Maybe they're not this expensive, Joe. You might have to. Um... I mean, so we're jumping right into it. So for people that are watching, give a what's up. Give a thumbs up. Give us a little something in the chat and uh, we'll get to it. But yeah, really the theme of today, 2023. You're still on the fence about dropshipping. You have your own store. You're not where you want to be yet. What, what's standing between you and success? The right products, the right suppliers, execution. So today we're gonna go. We're gonna we're gonna find some products that people just aren't selling, and maybe you'll be the one to start selling them and to start killing it. Yeah. So oh, I'm not really seeing many things too promising with this olive oil press. But I feel like there's like something where there's somewhere we could go from here that might be good. Maybe if we check the women owned. Well, businesses. Joe, I mean, you're you're saying you're not seeing it a lot. I mean, look, at, go back. One man, I, I'm seeing the Earl right here. We're on Amazon here. Someone's selling an automatic olive oil nut seed oil expeller machine for four hundred eighty-five dollars. 
Right. But I'm saying I don't see any like brands that would make be appropriate for high ticket drop shipping. Well, look. You know? Yeah. Why don't we, why don't we lower the price tag again just to see what's, uh, because even if it's not necessarily of the best price point, it could it could steer us in a. I just when I see this list of stores, I see eBay, DHgate, Walmart. It, uh, you know, it's not. I, I see these weird uh, names, Pity Ba. You know, it's not instilling a lot of confidence in me that this was a good idea. Yeah, well, you screwed up, Joe. So why don't we just? How about we narrow it down to oil press? Oh, Castiglio's Kitchen. What is there we go. go. Okay, get, let's go into it. Fabio, Tomato machine. Fabio <laughs> Leonardi. <laughs> what the hell is this? Hey, uh, Mike, it's a tomato a squeezing machine. <laughs> you need it to a squeeze of the tomatoes. No, but yeah, this, so... is, uh, this is interesting. What can you play the video here? Hey, this is a Fabio Leonardi. I'm gonna show you. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Okay, okay, we're in Bologna. Can you hear this or no? No, no, I can't hear it. For over one, for over one hundred years, a Fabio Leonardi has manufactured the world's best. Tomato milling and meat grinding machines. Right, so wine. There. So you can't hear this, but I mean, they're basically saying that they've been pursuing culinary perfection for centuries. Well, I want to, um, I want to stick with this, but why don't we search Fabio Leonardi some more here? Uh, just on on the Google and see what else he's got going on. Okay, so this tomato milling. So this is this is already a pretty underground product. I mean, there's really only a couple people selling Fabio Leonardi. Fabio Leonardi. All right, in Let's stock see. too. This Yahoo store has it in stock. Tomato milling. This is like. Would you would you say this is a likely dropshipping store, Joe? I don't know. Web, web brands direct. direct. Click it. Click it or ticket. Blocked. Dude, I love this. I love when we get to this section of the internet. <laughs> This is like, whoa! God damn, it. DIY basement toilets. Oh my god! <laughs> what is this? <laughs> uh, why does it matter that it's in the basement? Uh, I don't know. Maybe the plumbing. Oh, is... oh, like installing a basement bathroom. Yeah, I'm sure the plumbing is different. Yeah. But like I don't know, should we get too far away from these tomato milling machines? Well, well, okay. So let's go. So okay, no, 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 no. So now we're all right. Tomatomilling.com, right? We're looking at these tomato mills. We got Fabio Leonardi. We got OMRA. We got Weston Natural Classico Squeezo True Induction. These are the brands here that this this website has. So let's see what else they got. Okay. I gotta say, I feel like this is like a this is like an old school, like dropshipping store or something. I don't know what. I can't even see the prices on this shit. No, I know. <laughs> uh, this is cheap. True induction. You know, Mike. I think some of these induction um, cookers are are pretty expensive. Actually, this one is only three hundred eighty thousand uh, uh, three hundred eighty dollars, but. Um, What's so good about it? I don't really know, but I, I've seen them for like thousands, I think. Could you just like throw this on anything? People make kitchens, right? Like they'll do their kitchens and then they'll just throw the induction cooker on like. 
top of the island, the kitchen island, or the build it in or something. Uh, yeah, is that like what the idea is. I might be really stupid, but and this could be totally wrong. I don't think they get hot. Like, I don't think it's like a regular electric stove. I think it somehow heats the pan. Like You don't, don't think know. it's like hot or, to the touch? Or, or it's like really fast or something. It's not like a regular electric stove, I don't think. Yeah, it, magnetic. It's magnetic. Transfers heat from the cooking unit directly to the pot. Interesting. All right, pull it up. What induction cooker? Induction uh, burners. Abio. So it's pretty interesting how, you know, you think food. Uh, you know, you think food stuff, and you feel like there's not a lot to be explored there. Yeah, like kitchen stuff. But it's pretty interesting the stuff we've er already found. Why don't you do a price sort here? Yeah, I've already. We see got Kitchen Aid getting their friggin' uh, Harry mitts in here, but <laughs> trying to find something that's like a green toe in stock. Well, what, do you want to um, what are you what are you looking for? Like a more niche down type store? Yeah, yeah, that's what I was looking for. Um, well, there's this, like this one. Yeah, we can look at the meat processing plant. They got a lot of stuff here. Look at this. So, panini press. Look at this. But are we get are, you know are we getting into this territory where we tried to do a niche like this once, with like commercial like really commercial food stuff and it was like too crazy, like well I mean we did have this one experience where we tried to sell, um, I mean I'll tell you what it was right we tried to sell like um, the glass cases like in the stores that you see, yeah for uh, people people know what I'm talking about. And yeah, it was like, we're like, all right, we're, we got it with the supplier. And then they sent us like a friggin' a Bible of like, <laughs> of their products. Like they didn't even send, they couldn't even send us like an a, a electronic thing to like upload the products. Yeah. So we basically scratched it, but I, I can't say you got to throw the whole thing out because of that. That was just one supplier. Um, right. Well, I know this brand wearing, um, like I know they make commercial blenders and, and stuff like that. So I feel like this brand is uh, – it, we never – I don't think we've ever contacted this brand. But I feel like it could be a good place to start because you know, they obviously have these induction cooktop ranges. They all, But they also have panini presses and um, I'm sure they have other stuff as well. And I feel like it could lead us somewhere. Okay. So where do you want to go from here? Well, I was going to search the brand, see what we come up with here. I feel like already we're seeing some – oh, so this is, this is what we wanted to get into, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was a different brand. Yeah. I mean, so I feel like – yeah, we, we could have done it. We really didn't put in an effort, to be fair. Like – we just yeah. – we got the one in and then we were like, no. And this, the store, we were getting ready to sell it. It was like whatever. So – but – um, okay. So we're looking at the Sky Food. What is this? Stainless steel floor model blender. So this is like a commercial type blender. Make snack time more fun by making your own dips with the Sky Food blender. What? In just a few seconds, you can whip up fresh salsa, sauces, and creams effortlessly. You can even make fruit juices to complete your entree. Who's using this for snack time? <laughs> no, so yeah, I think actually uh, I I've seen one of these in a place I used to work. Um, 
yeah, it's just a big blender, I think. And I, I think it, the food you see comes out this little spout here. Joe, look at um on their navigation bar what they have on the right hand side. Ah. <laughs> so this is what I was trying to explain in, in the previous episode where we were looking at more janitor stuff. Like you can go down the route of just having a janitor store or you could have it as part of a something like this, like a culinary store where, you know, you're making a mess in the kitchen. You got to you got to janitorize it so you could have you could dip into the the janitor sector a little bit for the, the purpose of this store. So there's multiple ways to uh, to skin this cat. But do we think this is a dropshipping store, Joe? Because they got a bunch of pretty big names. They might be drop shipping some stuff. They might be drop shipping the Sky Food Blender. Well, what do we see? Uh... See, like people, I think get scared of this stuff because they're like, "Oh, you know, KitchenAid or whatever." Just because maybe you can't sell KitchenAid doesn't mean you can't sell like other more niche down brands in the particular vertical. Direct supply. So this name implies that there could oh, be yeah. some drop shipping going on here. And they are carrying this uh, wearing commercial blender. Yeah. Why don't you scroll down a little bit? I want to like see um, if they give any more hints to if they're drop shipping or not. Leave a message for them. Ask. <laughs> Is this a real lady? AI. <laughs> procurement automation um so yeah i don't know if they have doesn't seem to say much about shipping i'm i'm automatically believing that they're drop shipping because they don't have like an address anywhere they don't have like a phone number i think their their footer leaves a lot to be desired to be honest yeah i'm surprised they're on google shopping Justin said, Google the address. Where, where do you see an address? I think he's saying Google to find the address. No. Anyway. Uh, I feel like Hatco is another brand that we've we, we've uncovered here. So Hat we've, oh. we've already found wearing. And I feel like this kind of leads us to commercial convection ovens, um, commercial pizza ovens commercial blenders, panini press, um, slicers. Yes. Oh, hold on one second. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, wait. Go back. Go back real quick. So what I was saying before, like, there are so many. Look at that right there. Um, Restfab, full service, countertop. What is that? I guess, it, oh, this is like a heating thing okay okay we're back in display case hell <laughs> it is it is a display case but i really that's the thing like i haven't even seen anybody attempt this stuff besides for us where we just we gave it like the biggest half-ass effort yeah because we already had a store that was like built out and profitable and we were just like you know found a supplier or whatever but nowadays i'm confident if we would be able to get some of these suppliers here like yeah, I mean, this is definitely being drop shipped 100%. They're not warehousing this. Yeah, I think that's likely. I don't know. It's hard to know for sure, but I think I that's think likely. By the fact that it says non returnable item, it is. Um... Where'd you go? Oh, I don't know. I found something else interesting, though. I was looking for more drop shipping evidence. What'd you find interesting? These um, soup warmers. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, I really haven't seen anybody try and attempt this stuff. It's not like we've had a student and they've been like, oh, I tried to do, uh, you know, Winco warmers. Yeah. They go after these different brands. Like, nobody ever does this stuff. Which, like, I don't know why. I don't know why. But even within, um, this is getting into more commercial cookware. Cookware. <laughs> Even in commercial, uh, there's even residential cookware. There's there's plenty of stuff too. 
not plenty, but you could build out a store for residential kitchenware. 100%. Yeah, I, I think the suppliers here might be a little tricky. I'm not – that's that's the thing though is this would be an industry that – you know, people want us when they they join uh, they join our course or they, they message us. They expect us to know is this good, is this bad. But all we could do is come up with good concepts, good ideas. And then this, this contacting the supplier is going to tell all the story. I would be very hesitant to think that you couldn't even get you couldn't get in with one of these. No, I think you can. I guess um, my hesitation is I feel like the, it could be one of those situations where the margin is uh, not great. The margins. It I could don't know. be. It could not be. But there's really only one way to find out. Exactly. And I'd say that this shit is certainly underground. We've only had one student. Who is not in the US tried to do something like this. And they really only had like a couple suppliers. It wasn't like a full scale effort towards this. And yeah, I mean, just look at all these brands. Like these are not, this is not KitchenAid. This is not Vitamix. These are like underground brands you're only going to know about if you're actually interested in buying the thing. Yeah. And I think it really opens the gateway to, you know, doing doing a lot because you're tapping into, you know, say the restaurant owner demographic or the hotel owner or these different demographics that are going to need more stuff than just the soup warmer. You'll have people that come and they buy one off soup warmers, but I'd imagine you have people that come and they want to they want to build out a full commercial kitchen. Right, and that's where I feel angling the the site correctly is going to be um very very important these are two very interesting angles here that i see in so right here plant-based pros and restaurant and more so these stand out to me definitely drop shipping yeah these stand out to me though because they're not the, the typical like it's not webster on store and it's right. not like the other ones that we found um, but these definitely stand out to me. Huh. Well, you look at that. They, they speak Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, the grain mills is interesting. That is interesting. Bake Max. All right. We've done it again. Let's uh let's let's end the stream. Because right, cool. I mean yeah, look at all this stuff. What in the hell is that? So yeah. I don't here's oh I just closed that. Here's the thing. I don't hate this angle, the plant based pros, but I feel like there's just no re. Ugh. Why do they have frigging greenhouses? Now, now they're getting a little. Uh, I mean, this is definitely a dropshipping store. Yeah, but I think the uh, the point is here. If they're dropshipping these things, so can you. Oh, look at this! Look I, at these I don't. Even, I don't really like their angle that much, aside from like the juicing. Like, so, like some of these things fit. Some of these things are kind of loose with the angle. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like I, a dishwasher. Like you don't. Yeah. I feel like I wouldn't want to have like, um, like I wouldn't want to have a site that sells this stuff and greenhouses. Like it just doesn't make sense. It's a little unnecessary. It's a little unnecessary. It's very unnecessary because I mean, if you, you got the juicers, I feel like I'd rather just see them go down the more a more tight route of you have the juicers, you have the friggin' uh, Fabio Cavatelli, whatever the hell his name was. Yeah. You know, there's so many similar things. Like, how do you need to go all the way into dishwashers and friggin' greenhouses? And I mean, they got the display cases. Like, I don't know. I don't, I don't see. 
I don't see the appeal of that. But the point is here, 100% dropshipping. They got the frig- they got the fryers. What is this? Portable oil cart? What is that? Uh, Portable oil filter. There you go, Joe the Earl. There you go. We Back did it. it with the Earl. Go. <laughs> what the hell is an oil? Search oil filter. Because now now I was I was getting a little uh like we did it, now I'm back in. <laughs> well, what is this? USA Arma- Armadillo. Armadillo. <laughs> USA Equipment Direct. What the hell? Back with the janitor again. Look at this. Everyone wants to be a freaking janitor. You know, not for nothing. Good profession. This is as underground as it gets. Is it, this, it, this isn't even like mechanical or like uh, electrical, right? This is just yeah. <laughs> AI. <laughs> a wholesale grota. This is a grease trap. Uh, Your sister. No, so I mean. The truth is, is like, what? Is, I don't even know what I was gonna say. <laughs> well, Joe, you were talking about the margins, like you were concerned about the margins, and I agree. Sometimes some overly industrial stuff can have pretty bad margins, but the the idea is that you position yourself to not just have to sell things that are overly industrial. Right, and I, I think out of all the things we've been we've been exploring today, you could find something that has good margins, and that's really all you need is is one thing, one group of things. And that's really been our whole claim to fame since day one: is that people want to make friggin' uh, pizza pizza warmers are us when you have no idea anything about about the pizza warmer industry, and and I would agree that. Having pizza warmers dot us would allow you to get in with the pizza warmer suppliers, but is that where you want to hang your hat? They can have bad margins, so you want to be able to have the pizza warmers, have the friggin' uh, Fabio tomato presses, have the oil things, and be be in a bunch of different little uh, niches under one related umbrella, so you could sell these these different things. Some will have better margins than others. Some suppliers will be better than others. And then you can choose where exactly you want to dive in and expand the store, depending on what sells and what works out the best. Yeah, this is pretty interesting. I didn't even think of a pizza warmer. Like, obviously you've seen these things. This is like some 90s shit. Yeah. But I think they still exist, right? Like ice rink, I feel like. Yeah. Or like... uh... 7 Eleven? I don't know. I don't know. I think definitely at like a convenience store they would have this. But again, it opens another brand, Benchmark. Uh, but it's also pre- it's also a pretzel merchandiser. <laughs> I feel like you would see this stuff at like a stadium. What 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 what, what did, wait 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 before we get no no wait wait no uh, 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 uh. What? I also want to say, if you hit the right most, like scroll the thing to the right a little bit more in the shopping results here, it starts getting into some interesting stuff. You got the LaFille PTFE coded, uh, you start getting into like. Like the lab gate, like the lab stuff. Yeah. Oh, whoops. This is also also something I I have not seen anybody even try. Yeah, no, me neither. I would be pretty easy to, or I would be pretty eager to try something like this. The lab equipment. Yeah. I mean, look at, it's kind of crazy. Specimen shippers, like. (laughs) 
Interesting. Listen, I gotta yeah. uh I gotta drain the uh, lizard real quick. Okay. All right. I'll be right back. <laughs> so just keep keep talking. Maybe I'll take, take some chats. Take, I'll take, some, take chats. some chats. We got Justin. He's buffering. I'm Twigs. Hello, my <laughs> I always laugh every time every time I see I'm Twigs' uh little profile picture here. What's up, Twigs? M Zuber, hello. Yashu, hello. Ziad, let's get it. Ziad said, really realizing that patience is a bis- is a big thing in this business compared to low ticket and other online businesses. I mean, I would say name something else that requires less patience that you can get meaningful, sustainable, quicker results from. And uh, I'd be hard pressed to see that because, I mean, with low ticket drop shipping, you can maybe have some results quick, but you can have that with high ticket too. It just really depends on just how you start out with your store. Like, we got our first sale with high ticket drop shipping within two weeks, like the first day we ran ads for the store. And, um, you know, some students it takes a couple months, some students it takes a week, but I don't know what else you could do that. Once you get it off the ground, uh, it's a, a sustainable business model that you could sell. So you can let me know. Hit that bid said. <laughs> Hit that bid said. After months of procrastinating, finally landed my first big distributor supplier with a ton of brands. Uploading all the products now and just started to run ads. Better late than never. That's awesome, man. Hopefully it works out well. I think you're... Uh, in the in the discord so look forward to hearing how that worked out zach franklin said hey y'all yvonne miller said hey zach i'm here too <laughs> hector says man cave basement shitter yeah <laughs> that's uh that's what we got going on in the diy basement toilet.com world Connor said, hey, guys, I'm wrapping up my demo site for supplier onboarding. Could you please share some tips for contacting suppliers for the first time? What you got to say, John? You know, I feel like you just got to uh, you just got to do it. I don't know. To be, it's hard for me to, to understand the hesitation, I guess, because when I first started doing online business, like I was really so eager to to do the steps. Like I didn't really, I didn't really care. Like I don't know. I would just call anyone and, and do anything and see what happens. You feel like because you were so eager to quit your job, or you were so eager to, what were you eager about? Yeah, I mean, I didn't want to go back to a job. I didn't want to get a job. I didn't want to. I wanted to, and I wanted to quit the job. So everything relating to having a job, it superseded any hesitation I have about calling, you know, calling suppliers or any sort of embarrassment when I'm scanning stuff at garage sales or in the, you know, in some ghetto Walmart. (laughs) And that's what it's all about, right? Like every moment that you spend not calling the supplier or not taking the action, you're just slipping the quicksand bringing you back into employment it's just taking hold and you're just sinking down so yeah it really is a, a bit of a mental game right yeah i mean look there's a lot of things that i has that i you know hesitate with that i'm scared of that i'm uh calamine lotion yeah that i'm wary of but when it comes to stuff like this like i just think you just gotta not care yeah. You got to know, like, what else am I going to do? <laughs> am I going to not, am I going to not call? Yeah. And this isn't directed towards Connor right now, but I feel like um, in the beginning, especially for me, there's this feeling of like, you don't want to, you want a business, you want something that's going to make money. You don't have to interact with people. You don't have to like do you don't, you don't have to put yourself out there in any way. And I think the longer you go along with this, uh, you realize it's harder and harder to do that. And it's just easier just to call the suppliers. Like, do just put yourself out there a little bit 
and it winds up paying off because you develop relationships. You, you know, it, it works out. So I don't know. I, I feel like I share that sentiment of like, not, I don't know, having, having resistance to like interacting with people when it comes to doing this stuff. Anyway, Kartik said, is B2B a good option to dropship or should we just keep our focus on B2C? I mean, I don't have the data to support which one is better, but I want to know your opinion since you might have some data. Forget the data. Data is overrated. <laughs> That's what I think. I um, mean, I think we got plenty of data to show that B2B is fine. B2B is just as viable as, as B2C. But again, it goes back to what you were saying before, Joe. You can't be worried about these things. You got to just get in there. Like, screw whatever. If I told you right now, don't do B2B, should you believe me? Maybe I'm saying that because I'm doing B2B. I want all the sales for myself. <laughs> Can you trust anybody? Yeah. I, I don't know. When it comes to, like, business stuff, when it comes to stuff that we're doing and business stuff in general, like, I just feel like I don't put a lot of faith in – this kind of data. Yeah. Cause who has the data? Cause also it's like, what is a good option? What do you mean? Like a good option is pretty subjective. Like surely there are some B2B things that are good and some B2B things that are bad. The same with uh, B2C. There are some that are good and some that are bad. So I, you know, it's not, it's not really a hard science is, is what I'm trying to say. We're talking, we're talking like women's studies here. We're not talking physics. <laughs> yeah. This is a very soft science and that's where a lot of people go wrong. We've talked about this before. Everyone wants the checklist. You fill out the rubric and if it's over 50 points, then this is the niche you do. But this stuff is just so, it's so up in the air. Do five people could fail at trying to do compressorworld.com. But then you come in, you call you call a compressor supplier, you get in, you launch the store, you make sales, and boom, you're you're on your way to being the compressor king. Yeah, and it could just be a matter of like you call comp you know you call the compressor supplier, you have a good connection with uh, Ron on the other line on the other end of the line, and he's like, you know what, Joe? Yeah, you know, let's work together on these compressors. Whereas yeah. the other five people, you know, they uh, they couldn't hack it. Ron didn't like them. Yeah, he had a good day that day. He put the, the dollar into the M&M machine. Two packets came out. <laughs> He's feeling good. Kartik calls. Yeah, come on in. And boom, you're, you're off to the races. So it's, yeah, we could, we could harp on this as a whole episode of just like why data is bullshit why search volumes are bullshit. The only thing that matters is just getting out there and doing it. And you come up with your own data. And that's why we're here because we're sick of hearing everyone else's shit. I mean, I'll do this, do that. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Rant, rant over. Hector Sanchez. I'm about to set up Google ads. Do I need to include an address in my footer? Uh, do you? I don't know. I feel like the more information you have, the better nowadays, but I don't know. We don't have any data on it. <laughs> Google, does, Google doesn't give out their That's secrets. True. Yeah, I feel like it would be an advantage to have it. We've started stores without it, for sure. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. If someone has recently started their store and has an, a better answer to this, uh, you can chime in, but I, I don't think it's necessary. Echo flips Kings. What is, what is your uh, little picture here? Echo it reminds me of like a, a Sega Genesis game. It's a doll. It's echo the dolphin, man. You know what this is? Yeah. It's a Sega Genesis game. Oh, okay. <laughs> really hard. It's like one of those games where like, I don't know. The games used to be really hard. Not like now. Now everything is just these kids. 
everything's got to be easy. Yeah, everything they want to you want to they want to get they want to hook you. They get that dopamine hit right away as soon as you load up the game. When you load up Echo, you're like swimming around for like 30 minutes and you have no idea where to go or what to do. Yeah, I was a bit too young when you had the Sega Genesis. I remember you had like some crazy games. It was like there was that one Sega Genesis game. It was like some uh, like acrobatic man or lady, and she like fly through the rings. Do you know what I'm talking about? That was Sega Saturn. I think that was oh. called Knights. Sega Saturn, whatever. It's the same shit. Robin said, I "Can I always hire a sales guy taking care of suppliers?" Yeah, this was it. Knights into dreams. Holy cannoli. <laughs> Oh yeah, man, I it. just I just got the chills. <laughs> thinking, thinking back to a simpler time. <laughs> Robin says, "Can you always hire a sales guy taking care of suppliers?" Robin never hire a sales guy to take care of suppliers. These sales guys, you're gonna pay someone. How do you know they're gonna give a shit more than you? I, I, they're not gonna be able to to seal the deal as well. As you're the person that runs the business, your ass is on the line. You got to secure the supplier. That's really that's really what it comes down to. It's not that time consuming in the grand scheme of your dropshipping store. I'd say supplier acquisition. If we we've been dropshipping for six years now, supplier acquisition has maybe taken up less than one percent of our time because it's not that bad. You call up a bunch of them, you get in with some, then you start running the store, and then you don't call suppliers for another another little bit until you decide you need more. So it's I don't know. Again, it's I'd rather develop relationships versus have someone that I'm where are you gonna get a where are you gonna get a, a sales guy? What are you gonna pay them? I just don't I don't see the benefit. Justin, not the calamine lotion. You know, I actually got, <laughs> I think like three months ago, I actually got poison ivy. I think that's what kind of sparked the whole thing. Oh, was it? Yeah. With the calamine lotion. Connor said, thank you guys. I needed to hear everything you said. See, Joe, you're like, you're like Dr. Phil. <laughs> Kartik said, thanks, guys. Robin, he laughed at something. Hit That Bid said, you don't need an address in your footer, but you will need it in your policy page to be merchant compliant, I believe. Yes, I believe you do need an address in your, I don't know if it's your privacy policy, um, or one of those terms of service, one, one or the other. But yeah, if you download like a basic template for either of those, it would be like, put your address here. So. I am Twig says, Joe, what games do you currently play? Uh, I mean, currently I'm playing a little StarCraft 2 and Dota 2, but I don't know. I don't have the, the mental energy like I used to have. That's why we got to get on Twitch, Joe. <laughs> well, I my hope, my hope would be one day to, uh, I don't know. I would like to do a, a gaming thing one day, but. I don't know. I don't know if it's ever going to happen. I think about it. <laughs> Toddy said, let's play Fortnite. I don't like Fortnite. You played it? Yeah, just, I mean, not very briefly. It wasn't, it wasn't for me. Yeah, you're not a big, like, uh, shooter <laughs> type. Uh... No, I, I don't, I don't like shooter games. You have to be overseeing different, uh, different worlds and. Yeah you know, doing stuff like that. So, all right, we're back. We're back to talking about the secret underground hidden products. Well, can we, can we do a quick recap? I feel like we found a bunch of, uh, yeah, let's do a recap for the people in here that, uh, didn't start from the bottom with us. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so let's, I uh, see, yeah. I see our boy up there on the kind of the, the middle tab, middle to the right. What the, Oh, this guy? Fabio. Where's Fabio? He's on the tabs. On the tabs. On oh, 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 oh. To the right, to the right. Fabio Leonardi. Right, so we started out, we searched um some oil 
press because we were talking about drilling oil. And then it led us to uh, Fabio Leonardi's uh, tomato tomato press. Yeah. So can you go back to that, Joe? Right. So seven seven hundred eighty dollars. Nothing to sneeze at. And that took us down a rabbit hole of oh, four seventy nine. What I say? Seven eighty seven. I'm dyslexic. Anyway, four eighty. That took us down a little rabbit hole. We searched Fabio Leonardi, see what else he had going on. We searched tomato milling. And so if you go to the next tab, Joe, we wound up on this site, tomatomilling.com, had more tomato mills, and we got we went down the uh, induction, the induction cookware rabbit hole. Yeah. And that was well then that we got good, to, that was then, we, then we got to panini presses um you know we're getting into different uh, fryers where 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 was the fryers um uh pretzel merchandisers we were at some weird things where the oil filter right the portable right. so this portable, yeah, portable oil, filter. oil filter so really this led us down to finding a few sites that were clearly drop shipping that had a host of these products where it's almost you could say commercial kitchen stuff, but even residential kitchen stuff. Um, and just there's so many there's so many routes you can go from here. But the point was that like these brands are not these super well known brands. Like if you get in with AdCraft, someone searches AdCraft, how the hell would you even know about AdCraft unless you're actually going to buy one of these things? Unless you're in the market for a, a portable oil filter. Yeah, I do want to see. So, just to um, expand on what you're talking about, if I type in ad craft, just curious to see what comes up in Google because this is indicative of what other people are searching. <clears throat> so, yeah, these are people that you're talking about would be in the market for something like this, you know, possibly restaurant owners or someone that operates a, a commercial kitchen. So this also gives us some pretty interesting insights into other products that we could go do. Adcraft rice cooker. <laughs> Wait, kitchen monkey. Boom. I like that name. Janitorial supplies. Holy. <sighs> yeah, so there is. They're deep in this, in this game here. So, like, how could you possibly believe that you would not be able to get in with any of these suppliers? Yeah. What is this called? This, uh, this, this juice like, thing. Uh... I keep saying that this is beverage dispenser or something. Yeah, slushy and frozen drink machine. There you go. Right. Look at the add these to the list. I don't have a list. Okay. Lancer drink dispenser. Enter drink machine. Lancer drink tower. See, this is like some old school shit. Yeah, but but obviously, you know, people are still advertising it. And... Wait, 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 wait. Look at the go down like four to the right. This? No, to the left. Best in class stainless steel. Click it. Water distiller. Water st distillers direct. <laughs> what is? Is this the same people that have the other site? I don't know. I, think I mean, listen, listen, listen. Something is going on on here. Because, well, first of all, what is, what is the name of this brand? H two O Labs. And it even says h2olabs.com. But the fact that this site exists and they're advertising, I feel like tells you something. Untapped. Look at this add to cart button, Joe. Who's buying off of a, web, a website like this? That's what I'm saying. I feel like somebody is because otherwise they wouldn't be advertising. What is this? 12 gallon a day automatic factory configured 80 gallon water distiller made in the USA. 
No China. Why is no one even trying this? Oh. Click survival distiller. So that, go that goes back into something else we were playing around with the other day. Solar panel. And so I guess yeah, you need this, like, if you're off grid or whatever, you're capturing the rain or something. Non-electric water distiller that can save your life in an emergency or disaster. Huh. Surge grab is still. Let's see what else. But so many different brands, so many different angles. Like, it's crazy. You said in the beginning of the stream, do you feel like all the, uh, you know, the Earl has been slurped up? Beauty equip. What? This one, someone's doing a bad job of this. Uh, <laughs> I'm putting this on Google at this point, honestly. Well, because that's how underground this is. Like, Google probably doesn't know what the hell this is. Yeah, this is a bad website. Become a dealer. Oh, no. Oh, this is. Uh, go down. Okay. <laughs> what, yeah. what, what do they have? I don't even know. I have no idea. I mean, but the point is, I feel like this is bulletproof rocket stoves. Oh, my God, Joe. The daddy long leg kits. I feel like it's a good sign when you're on a website and you're researching niches and you don't even really even know what it is. <laughs> yeah. Because everyone wants to do the, the what? The end table. The dining room table. The pizza oven. Like we're, we're talking about pizza. We we everyone goes to pizza oven. We found that pizza display, like the pizza pizza and pretzel merchandiser. Yeah. Like that's really what it's uh what what you need to explore. Yeah. I don't know. What else is there to say? What else do people want? <laughs> the only other thing to do is just go to buildassetsonline.com slash class, register for our free web class, where we show you products we've drop shipped to make over seven figures in online website, website sales. It's not revenue. We've sold... A bunch of websites and we've made seven figures off of selling the websites not the website sales exactly this is what we do yeah yeah i actually uh we're in the process of selling a website right now possibly and the guy that did i tell you this i think i did to so the guy that um i was on the call with today is a uh, he owns like a pretty big brand on Amazon and it's like off Amazon as well. But I mean, he had he was like really clueless when it came to SEO. Oh. So I don't know, it was pretty, pretty interesting how someone can build like a he kind of he kind of had all the skills that we we don't have. <laughs> gotta unite yeah he was all right he was all right he was a cool guy that's what, i feel like we suck at this you know like there's so many higher levels you could take it to like if you look at empire flippers you look at quiet light you look at all these website brokerages sites go on sale every week for like millions and millions of dollars yeah so that's that's really a point that we haven't hit yet yeah no we have sites that I, I believe could sell for like seven figures, but if, I mean, we haven't done it, you know? So like there's people out there, I mean, they're selling stuff for eight figures. So it's not like, you know, we're, we're the only people in this and we're selling, well, I don't know. I don't know the, the friggin' metaphor for it, but we're not like this thing is so wide open and we're so mediocre. <laughs> the hierarchy of just online business success that it's like I don't know I don't know 
Well, I think I would say we're above uh, average, but we're not in the elite tier. We're not in the elite tier, but we're in the elite fleet, and you can be too if you go to buildassetonline.com slash class, register for our free web class. I'm Twigs. Have you ever deep dive on reaching out to suppliers? Like instead of calling the number on the website, you went on LinkedIn to skip the gatekeeper and talk to the real head supplier guy. Um, never done the LinkedIn stuff. I don't really like LinkedIn. So you actually reminded me. I, I made a LinkedIn for something. I need to cancel it right now. I had to do like a free trial to message someone. Yeah, I just don't think it's that complicated. Like, um, if you go to the Gravistill page, Joe. Wait, let me let me cancel this link okay. subscription before I forget. LinkedIn subscription. Anyway, Twigs, I don't I don't think it's that complicated. Like, I don't think you have to go through many gatekeepers in doing this. Like, if you look at some of the websites we we just looked at, they were such shit. And a lot of these suppliers, like, they're on a similar level of uh, technology, and just I I wouldn't be that intimidated by it, like. You could probably just call and get to the direct person a lot of the time. All right. What do you what did you want me to do? Let's, I just wanted to make the point. If you go to the Gravistill website or on the ta- the or the S H T F and Go, uh, it's on the other tab. Like okay. this said this has become a dealer on the bottom. And I don't know if this is a good what they're selling, whatever, but like this is my point here. You don't need LinkedIn to get in contact with these people. Yeah. Yeah. Not to say that it could never work, but I would probably argue that in those cases where like you got to go through 36 chambers of bullshit to reach like the decision maker, those are probably bad suppliers anyway. (laughs) What are you looking at? These head like, how does this... What is this? I guess this they have like a, some sort of website to go along. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's like an affiliate website. Yeah. I don't know what this is interesting. This hurts my eyes. Why? It's so bright. Is it, what, is this, what is this? ClickBank? <laughs> Let's watch it. It's not going to play the sound. Oh, fuck. I, f- I feel like this is why we need to stream. Like, I would just, I'll get on here and let's watch this stuff. What did you say? This is why we, I, we need to, like, Twitch stream, you know? Yeah, I mean, that's what you, that's we what just get uh, on here. We just watch, like, videos like this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got, I mean, should we do it? Yeah, we would say we're going to do it. I mean, we, we, we'll be on YouTube as well, but. We got to start expanding our audience. Facebook. Yeah. Get the moms with the, with the hyphen uh, last names in there. <laughs> oh, man. What, what, what is this? Easy seller? Oh, this is like a, maybe like a prepper type. Like a food seller, yeah. Yeah, this guy's prepped. Like he's got the American flag. He's got <laughs> the freaking constitution. <laughs> That's what you need in an emergency. <laughs> Yeah, he's ready to declare martial law. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I wonder what this is. There's probably so many prep things. VSL, yeah. Damn, straight to the VSL. What? How much? Is, wait. The backyard solution for saving your stockpiles and your life in the next crisis. Damn, one point two four earnings per click. Damn. One sale for every 45 visitors. I doubt this actually converts, though. Like, this is too old. But they're advertising. I don't understand. I feel like there's still a lot of, like, warrior stuff going on that I don't even know about. Yeah, it's all so untapped. Maybe not even untapped, but just it's too much to keep track of, like. I feel like we're already in so many worlds, like the SEO, the dropshipping, the land. And, you know, you talk with that guy who's doing the blender, uh, 
whoops, he's doing a, a big Amazon product and he doesn't even know about SEO. Yeah. So it's like, you can't be in all these different worlds and at all times, but yeah, I don't know because a niche like this, you know, health, wealth, relationships, this is, uh, this hits the, the, the lizard brain of people, right? But I don't think, I don't think this is related to this original site that we found. Well, how is it not related? I think it was just an ad. Like it was, they put this ClickBank banner ad. Who put yeah. the ad? The people that own SHTF preparedness. Right, but that was their their dropshipping site we were looking at. Well, this is their it blog. S S T H F and Go. Right, right, right. Survival homesteading. What's a TF? I don't know. The fan? What said it? Start with a plan. I don't know. I think we're losing we're losing we're losing viewers. I think we gotta we gotta I mean, we're over it. an hour in at this point. This is all just bonus time for me. Yeah. We said what we had to say. We show what we had to show. And now I'm trying to have fun. Joe's showing his belly button. <laughs> There's usually some sort of lint in it. <laughs> yeah, look at that. crazy I think right i've never had lint in my belly button really i have it every day how how could that be possible i have no idea every day it build it there's a new <laughs> lint in there see this is why people think we're scams <laughs> we got belly button lint just like the rest of the it's like the common man you know yeah. how could we be making six figures online <laughs> with all this belly button lint you think Jeff Bezos has belly button lint? Hell no. He probably doesn't have a belly button. <laughs> How does he eat then? What do you mean? <laughs> you eat with your belly button? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I figure that's how he gets nutrients. Yeah, right through the, the umbilical. <laughs> well, I think that's it. I think we got to call it. I got things to do. Me too. I got to go lay down. You got to go lay down? Yeah. Too many strawberries. All right, guys. Thank you for tuning in. That was a fun one. Go to buildassetsonline.com slash class to sign up for our free web class. We show you everything in depth, step by step, how to build the dropshipping store. You could sell for six figures. We show our own products. You could do it too. And that's all I got to say. Until next time. Take it easy. Bye, everyone.